Good morning, everybody. I hope you are enjoying your snow day. Um, I thought it might be kind of fun to just have church from home and uh, give you a little something to think about. Um, I'm not going to talk about what we were going to talk about in middle school today or what we were going to talk about in high school this evening uh, because we'll probably pick right back up next week with all that. Um, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to share uh, something that kind of I've been wrestling with and going through. And uh, I thought I'd bring you all in on it. So maybe grab yourself some coffee if you haven't already and gather around and I don't know, let's, let's have church in a weird way this morning, even though we're not really together. Um, but, you know, we live in a world where anytime that you make a decision or you're, you're thinking through what you need to do with your life, what decisions you need to make, um, what, what kind of choices need to be made, you, you always kind of have to defend yourself. And if you made the wrong one, then you have to stick by your guns and still defend it, even if you, deep down you kind of know you're wrong. Because if you were to admit that you were wrong, then that's, it's like it shows weakness. And, and we, we don't do that. We're uncomfortable with that. We're, we're uncomfortable uh, recognizing our limitations. And, and I think that that creates unhealthy things in a lot of ways. Uh, it makes our friendships and our relationships um, less likely to be vulnerable and real with each other because we don't talk about the tough things. We don't talk about what we're struggling with. And, uh, and so I thought it'd be kind of cool. It, this is just something I, I've read several times in the last couple of weeks, and uh, I, I've been kind of mulling on it. And so I thought I'd uh, just share it with you guys. This is coming straight from uh, Paul. He's writing to the Corinthian church, and so this is in 2 Corinthians, um, starting in chapter 11. And he, he's going on, and he's talking about how, you know, I, I have suffered in many ways. You know, I've given up a lot in order to, to carry this message to you, in fact, he's he's going on, and this is in chapter eleven, um, starting in verse twenty-three. He goes, I, "I've had great labors, far far more imprisonments, uh, with countless beatings, and and often near death." He says, five times I received the hands of the Jews, the forty lashes, less one, which is, you know, if you've seen the Passion, it's like when they scourged Jesus and and they were whipping him. They believed that forty times would kill a person, so they did forty minus one. So. Um, you know, the three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, meaning rocks were thrown at him in an attempt to kill him, not the, anyway. Um, three times I was shipwrecked. Uh, a night and a day I was adrift at sea. That terrifies me, honestly. I don't like open water. I don't like not being able to see what's going under there. Hey, bud. You wanna come say hi? Say hi. And so he, he goes on, you know, uh, on frequent journeys and danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people. His own people were trying to kill him and, and put him in prison. Um, you know, wandering in the, in the wilderness, wilderness uh, in danger from false teachers. You know, and he goes on and on and on about all these sufferings he's had. I don't know. That's rough. Why don't you go find mommy? And so he's... Uh, he's going on and on about all these things that he's gone through for the sake of the gospel in order to bring the message of Jesus to people so that they can know what it means to know the Father, what it means to know God. <laughs> Sorry about that. It is what it is today. Um, and so he goes on in, in, in chapter 12. He says, I must go on boasting, you know. But he says... I'm not boasting on my behalf. Just, just hold that thought. He he goes down uh, and says, "So I I'm gonna keep boasting, but to keep me from being conceited, because of all the knowledge that God has given me and all this stuff." He says, uh, "To keep me from being conceited, um, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me," and basically just saying like this was so bad that the, it, it, I felt like it was Satan himself, maybe it was, that was just trying to keep me from delivering the message and the gospel that God wanted me to. You know, there's, there's stuff I, I feel like God has called me to do. Maybe you've been that way. You felt like God has called you to do something, but it seems like no matter what you do, 
obstacles are constantly being put in your path and stopping you from doing what you feel like God wants you to do. And so he goes, there was this thorn given to me in the flesh. And it, he, he says, it was to keep me from becoming conceited. He says, three times I pleaded with the Lord about this so that it should leave me. And that doesn't mean just like he prayed once a week ago and then again a couple days ago and then he prayed again today. It means like he spent time probably fasting, abstaining from things, and spending a significant time devoted to prayer, a season devoted to prayer. This could have been a long period of time, weeks, even months, praying that this would be taken away. And he did that on three separate occasions. And we don't, we don't know what this was, actually, uh, ironically enough. Uh, some scholars think that it was like his eyesight because he had bad eyesight. And he felt like that was crippling him from delivering the message uh, in all the ways that uh, God wanted him to or that he wanted to. And, but we don't know. We, we just know that whatever this thorn in the flesh was, it's a, it's a metaphor for something that was greatly uh, debilitating to him and keeping him from, it was a weakness. And, and here's the part that I want you to tune in on because here's the important part. He says, but he said to me, meaning Jesus, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that my power in Christ may rest in me, the power of Christ may rest on me. And I think that's a lesson for all of us because so often we are trying to defend ourselves, to defend our decisions, defend our way of living, defend, you know, even if we're wrong, we have to, to just stick our heads in the sand and just do what we think is right. We can't admit weakness. And there, there's a, a humility issue with that. And he's saying... It was in my weakness that God's strength was, was able to be shown. God was able to use my weakness in order to show his strength. And, you know, because of my weakness, I'm now stronger. Because God is working through me in ways that uh, I would never have even done because I would have been depending on my own strength. And so I would encourage you guys, you know, if whether you are in middle school, middle school is rough. Middle school is hard. Uh, high school also is not easy. So if you're going through a season or have been through a season or maybe you're about to go through a season where you just feel like you are not equipped to, to complete the tasks that are put onto you by coaches, teachers, parents, maybe even me as a student minister, maybe you feel like you're letting God down all the time. I would just encourage you, God's strength is made, made true in your weakness. His grace is sufficient for you. No matter who you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your weaknesses are, no matter what your, your faults are, the mistakes you've made, none of that matters. His grace is sufficient for you. So I, I just hope that this morning, uh, even though we weren't able to meet all together at church, um, I, I just hope that you're having a, a good day and enjoying the, the snow outside. Um, I was actually kind of upset because I, I have a tripod for my phone, um, but I, I have like two or three of them. I even have a selfie stick. I left them all at my office at the church, so I've got this like really weird contraption all set up with like a tripod and a, my wife's hair tie and a book holding it tilted down so my face doesn't look fat <laughs> so uh anyway um i hope this is encouraging to you i hope you guys are enjoying your snow day and uh i will see all you middle schoolers at the church on saturday for glow in the dark dodgeball um hopefully the snow next weekend doesn't cancel that um so keep that in your prayers um and parents if you're watching uh, we've got our open house at the same time um and, and we're gonna have wings, it's gonna be great. Sorry, middle school, we don't have food for you. But make sure you eat before you come. But I uh, love you guys, and uh, I'll, I'll see you next week.